My name is Bernard Sweeney. I'm an Irish traveller. I'm based here in Sligo, the northwest of the Republic of Ireland. And I'm going to try to give a reasonably short video on the history and maybe even the culture of Irish travellers. It's probably important to say that I do not claim to represent or talk on behalf of travellers or indeed any culture. And it's more about speaking out against things that are hurting people, including my family. Um, has had myself over the years. But this is not about playing victim either. This is about dealing with seriously, um, serious chronic issues that did, had not persisted or had not existed within our culture till very recently, such as the high levels of suicide, the life expectancy of 65, where I think one or 2% of our community gets to that age or past that age and around 50 percent odd are day before 40. so these are serious issues that we did not have before but we most certainly do have them now this is despite investment and funding into what they call travel organizations this is not to antagonize anyone i'm using this based on my own experiences my own mentality i suppose and yeah i would ask people again just to blank their mentality everything they think they feel they thought or told and so on and so forth. Just leave it behind for a moment and use an open mind. Um, let me start with Irish travellers today in 2021 in the Republic of Ireland are recognised as an ethnic minority since 2017. Since then, as it had been for the years prior to that, health statistics were still getting worse and worse and worse. We live in overcrowded uh, situations. We make up, I think, about 10 or 11% of the overall Irish homeless uh, list. And there is no good statistics where, where we look when it comes to Irish travellers. Despite that, uh, because despite our oppression, um, we also have very bright, intelligent, educated travellers. And if you go to the sport, you'll see we're very physically uh, active people. We're not these victims that have been portrayed for so long. Uh, we've had numerous world champion uh, professional boxers uh, with the world titles. We've had uh, travel women involved in sports, uh, playing for international clubs, national clubs. Uh, abundance of young travellers picking up just about every medal that could ever be made in sports and various sports. So put that to one side and put our prosecution to one side. And I'll give you an idea, I think, a history uh, as such on Irish travellers. Travellers itself is what is called a colonial label. In other words, we would not know that we were travellers unless there was somebody else telling us that or accusing us of being this, that or the other. So if we came to a consensus, in other words, we came to an agreement and said, OK, fair enough, we'd we'll, we'll be travellers, give us some peace. Um, and then they will be asked, where did our culture come from, apart from, you know, burning us and injecting us and throwing us off motorways. And these are coming from uh, government officials throughout the years, let alone the public uh, mobs that would often attack vulnerable people at times. Um, all of this has a historical context and it has happened once upon a time and it still persists to this moment. So I don't want people to feel that they're being accused or feeling guilty or we're all on the same boat and sure my people also suffered and all of that. Or I speak Irish, I'm as Irish and so on and so forth. Just drop all of them concepts and labels for a moment and try to focus on what I'm trying to say, the best way I can say it. So Irish travellers are recognised as an ethnic group. Ethnic in my mind means a people without a land. I'll give you a quick example. If you take Native Americans who are classed as an indigenous people, if you were to take um, people from Australia, the indigenous people of Australia, First Natives and so on and so forth. They're all indigenous because their origins, so, so to speak, are from the land. So ethnic might be people who came from a different land, who were taken from a different land, or had no choice but to end up on a different land. So they might be classed as an ethnic minority. Ethnic in, I suppose, is like ethnicity. And ethnicity is like culture, traditions, way of being, way of seeing, way of feeling, and so on and so forth. Every walk of life has it. But in the dominant communities, they take it for granted. Um, like they can't understand, um, we can't understand various things when it comes to their cultures because they themselves are in the dominant culture. So they don't see it and they don't feel it. They don't have to be prosecuted for it. So let me go back into Irish travelers as a culture and an identity. 
there are a multitude of factors to Irish traveller culture that could not be seen, that would never be seen, because it isn't just about the wagons or the physical elements of it and so on and so forth. It's a psychological thing. It's, it's a way of being. So when we take Irish travellers, this colonial label, and we remove travellers and we put tinkers there. And then we remove tinkers and we put itinerants there. And then we move itinerants, we can put vagrants and hedge people, bogs people, woods people. But they're all labels. All labels that came from somewhere else. Because we wouldn't be around calling ourselves one thing or another unless there was somebody else in contrast to that or in conflict with that. So these labels, uh, the various labels going through back, through back time, are the same people, are the same culture, are the same ancestors. And we'll go back far enough, it goes right into the Irish society. So I'll give you an example. If you could use your mind for a moment and say, Ireland, literally green, it's a Celtic culture from top to bottom, from west to east, culture, west to east, yeah. from Sligo to Dublin. Um, was Celtic mentality, Celtic culture, Celtic traditions. And then along comes this other mentality, a forceful, dominant, somewhat cruel mentality, and I attacked the indigenous mentality and had reduced it to a minority because the people who may have the same surnames as travelers and class themselves as settled people, that's a psychological thing, that's a mentality. In the same way, if you put your child into school, and they go from one school or one classroom to the next classroom, one school to the next school, from one institution into employment, so on and so forth. They do that for a couple of generations. That becomes very, very normal. So much so you could never imagine a life without it. They can't imagine how people could even live without it. But that is also psychological and the belief in the environment you're from one in. So with Irish traveller culture, when we say Irish traveller culture, we're constantly asked about our culture, despite the fact Ireland opposingly have some of the finest colleges and universities in Europe, in the world maybe. But yet they're asking us who we are. And in the same breath, they're trying to promote them, this ancient Irish culture and traditions of O'Neill and O'Donnells and uh, Queen Maeve and all these um, myths or legends or whoever it might be. They're basing their history on that, that makes them connected to that. In other words, they're Irish because in somehow or another this happened on the island and they're kind of connected. But if you're thinking in mentalities, in psychological terms, like we've got two different ways of thinking, the reason we have two different cultures is because one was colonized by the English. Um, and this is recorded facts. So we would say the settled have a subculture, one that was carved out for them. They had no choice in the matter most of the time, actually all of the time. So it became a very English culture. Uh, and this is undeniably true. Uh, travellers were not processed or colonised in the same way. We didn't go through the same institutions, same systems, and we retained the old ancient Celtic culture. Many parts where we find words like Brehen Law, which was a, somewhat of a marvel, something of wonder in today's world for the settled community in other parts of the world, where we wouldn't have even known the word, but we would have been practising as part of our culture because we thought it was normal. It made common sense, as culture should make. So again, I'll park that and I'll go into the Irish traveller culture part. Who are Irish travellers? Again, this is all about mentality. It's about culture. Culture is mentality. And mentality is culture. Uh, the easiest way of explaining it. So we've got those two historical cultures now on the island. One we call the settled population, and one we call Irish travellers. Of course, Irish travellers get the blunt of it, they get the worst of it. I mentioned all the statistics. None of them are good, and to this day, they're literally killing us faster than any colonization project they could ever have. Because in the last hundred years, the Irish settled, uh, not their fault, maybe they couldn't get their head around it, couldn't get out of it, whatever the reason, had retained and kept all of the English systems of oppression in 1922, from their education to their politics, to their institutions, to their uh, landlord rights, and all of these things. They kept all the privileges. They even kept the systems where they got the public school for the masses and they got the private schools, or sorry, the middle class school for the middle classes and the elites. So this is all rigged in favor of a system. Uh, Irish travelers were not part of that system. It doesn't mean we don't want to be part of a system, but we cannot be crushed by the same system that are trying to convince us that it's good for us in the first place. It just does not make sense. So Irish traveler culture are what we call the indigenous culture. Now, it doesn't matter necessarily about names. It doesn't matter when they come in. 
I'll give you an example. The Celtic culture was a very powerful, lasting culture, and one that is again marvelled and it's a spectacular one to study for all the historians around the world, and they love that kind of stuff. To, for Irish travellers, it's quite natural. It became with us. But we found it difficult to use these words, and we found it difficult to find these words because we were not just cut off from their education, but we were also cut off from our own education. In other words, we would have lost the, the links of Celtic culture and understandings and the words and what might even have happened 500 years ago that still persists today. So we were deprived of all of that. So, but at the same time, we did maintain our culture, our identity, and we used the traveler language to counter this other mentality. Because a lot of people who were once speaking Irish, were speaking Irish, were still being sucked into this vacuum of the environment around them. In other words, you can go in uh, to an institution and you can be a very long time in there and you become part of that institution and you think it's normal. It's the same thing when you change the landscape, you change the environment, you change everything around you. And eventually you start to think that's normal and you might not be able to imagine another way without it. Now these systems are not trying to knock and block them or stop them. I'm trying to say that there needs to be a balance. There has to be a bit of give and take. They're not for everyone. An actual factor, they're not even designed for Irish people in general. The, the people who now call themselves the Irish, they like if they're the default Irish, are actually the subculture of an English mentality and traditions and way about them. This is evident, facts, because all their systems are the same. They've never changed them. But Irish travellers are part more of the indigenous Irish culture. My phone's gone bankers. But um, I hope I'm not making this confusing for anyone. But try to think it like this. When you get persecuted and they tell you to no, to try to make us feel inferior, uneducated. We need an education, and we get an education. I've seen all the travellers getting these educations, and they don't seem to be going anywhere. I don't see Trinity College or Dublin College uh, bringing them in talking about travel history or travel culture. The only way they'll reward them is the, if they do the pot and pan thing and go back as far as 1960s to the wagons. But anything more than that, you can forget about it. They're not letting them in. Until 1970, they weren't even letting the Catholics into Trinity College. This is 48 years later after the so-called independence. So travel culture is Ireland's culture. We were not always the minority, because when you think in mentalities, for example, there are many sets of people now with the same surnames as travelers. So which came first, the settled or the travelers? But if we're indigenous, we're part of the Celtic culture that was here before the English one came along, and the settled now have adapted a subculture of the English culture that would mean we're not the people who are different. Um, so bombarding us and driving us into this psychological genocide where we're pretty happy just to kill ourselves to end the pain. You're doing exactly what Edmund Spencer and the, the tutors and the Elizabethan conquest and what Dublin has been doing since 1922. What the, what the Protestants were doing to the Catholics. You were doing unto Irish travellers and you don't even know you're doing it. And you can't even explain how you're doing it because it becomes a mentality and it becomes normal. So I'm hoping for travellers to get, understand this uh, thing uh, for all the travellers. They might make us feel one way or the other, but only you have to keep remembering this. They too are victims. Like they are systematic. Systematic is in their program, literally from one generation after another to go into that system and be part of that system. So they can have Irish names, they can throw the Irish language in your face and try to make you feel less Irish, uh, we can put it back to the traveller language, but yet we are still the people right here, right now, that are having these conversations, and we're in the turn this narrative around, put it in its right context, and we all can move on, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, or travellers, or anyone else. This colonial, imperial mentality to call the settled culture, and not just settled people in Ireland, like I said to you, England, Ireland, both settled, Scotland, Wales, uh, Germany, um, all these places are interlinked with a settled uh, mentality, regardless of the, the language you might speak. I'll give you another example. You take England, they went down and colonized America. The Americans are speaking the English language. The English went down and colonized uh, Australia. They're speaking the English language. They colonized New Zealand and Canada and so on and so forth, and they're speaking the English language. The English language, put it into a small little box, started 1500 years ago as a means of controlling people not a liberating or celebrating or sharing, controlling. So much so the people that come up with the language, most of the time throughout the centuries, 
didn't even speak the language themselves. They didn't care about it because he spoke other languages. They just seen this one as a great way of controlling people. Um, a lot of this, I, I must credit uh, Dylan Foley, the Sligo archaeologist, and probably one of the best archaeologists in Europe, without a doubt. Uh, most certainly the best in Ireland, because no other historian or archaeologist or anyone else of the so-called Trinity Colleges or Dublin Colleges or these magnificent educated people can or has ever come forward and identified who travels were. These suspect, you know, they think, they did this and did that maybe. They, were never knew, they never knew. And why they never knew was because they were looking and reading from an English lens. In other words, an English mentality. Um, and this is not to take away people's Irishness and the settled mentality itself, what we call all the settled people, like the farmers, the townspeople, uh, the rich people. We now say the settled, but that wasn't always the case. Most, again, we'll go back to the people with the Irish surnames, uh, particularly the same as their own. They would have come from our mentality originally, but they haven't been persecuted for a very long time. But we are being destroyed up to this present day. When the English did it onto the Irish, Catholics did it onto the Protestants, and now the Irish settled are doing it on to Irish travellers. And they can understand why. They want to blame us and rather say it's our fault. So, and I'll give you one more example. It's called the Elizabethan Conquest, and it was set out as a conquest to alter the mindset of the Irish people in general. So, given in 1922, the English, or sorry, the settled Irish, had kept all of the English systems and institutions and educated themselves into that mentality. In 1963, they literally attacked Irish travellers because we didn't have the worst relationship even in the west of Ireland. Well, we certainly had a pretty good relationship in the west of Ireland up to that point. But since Dublin, seven years before they even let the Catholics into Trinity College, seven years before that, and 48 uh, years after becoming an independent state, all of a sudden, turn around and attack travellers. They try to word it in nice ways and put it into uh, reports, like the 1963 report, and documented that like, we're helping these people. They were not. They set out to destroy us in the same way as the English had once destroyed the mentality of the Irish people in general. With that, I let this one go and we'll come back to it. If you have any questions or anything like that, please send them my way and I'll guess them. <laughs> No, apart from that, um, I'll do more videos like this, and hopefully I'll get a bit sharper and uh, more to the point. What I would say to Irish travellers one more last time is that you are the indigenous Irish culture. You did not always roam the lands. Uh, we owned the lands. We had territories. We had farms. The English recorded this. Uh, they said that the farmers were looking after and feeding the, the gentry, they were calling them. The gentry meant with the old ruling class. Uh, like the chieftains and the kings and all this stuff that we still have. But what the English didn't know was that we, they were our families. They were literally our families living there. That not all travellers or warriors and poems had to constantly be on the move. That was part of that society and mentality. It was a wonder, it was a brilliant thing to be able to travel because that was a luxury back then. Uh, to live in a house was a dreadful thing with no disrespect because particularly when the Normans and English came along, the, shoved a lot of the Irish people in there. They had no choice, they had to go somewhere or else they were getting killed and persecuted. So when a disease or a, fam, a famine or a pandemic came along, it almost wiped the towns out because the towns had no facilities or no protections and their immune systems were going down because they were living in, in crowded, unhealthy places where travelers and the, these ancient Celtic uh, tribes kept moving and had different various skills that would have kept us alive. So with that, um, yeah, feel good about yourself. I know that our history is coming back, uh, a bit like Return of the Earls, but in a very friendly manner. <laughs> in other words, I'll finish off this briefly, that if we take what's right to be ours and take back that everything has been taken from, from human dignity, culture, identity, and cut off and marginalized and no voice and everybody looking down on us and everybody trying to pity us and they're going to save us and they make a living out of that for going on for years. All that I'm trying to say to you is that you are very proud people. We came from very proud people. We came from a very difficult past in history. We had ups and downs. Uh, we've been destroyed. But your parents, their parents, and their parents afforded them, their people resisted settled culture in the same way the Irish clans resisted the English mentality for a very good reason. If it was any good at all, 
it wouldn't be persecuting us. Instead, it's destroying us. But we need to find a balance. We can't strike back. We can't become angry. We can't become bitter. Because once we do, in other words, it's oppression, right? Oppression is when there's one dominant group oppressing the other. Taking, for example, the Jewish community got it dreadfully hard uh, throughout the centuries, let alone uh, 1930s, 1940s. But they got it pretty bad. Uh, so they were severely oppressed. But it came a time when they did get power and they had control. And I said they, I mean, Jewish organization. Doesn't mean other peoples. That'd be crazy to suggest that. But their uh, leaders, so to speak, they had gained power. And the first thing they did was oppress another community, almost to the degree that they were oppressed. Um, I remember the English did it, the Irish, and then the Protestants did it, the Catholics, and the Catholics once did it to the Protestants, and now they're all doing it to the Irish travelers. That's the same oppression. It's like getting oppressed, getting angry, and then picking it out with somebody else. We can't do that because we'd be just repeating history. We can't go into the same systems with adapting a settled mentality because it's an English one, and it's okay for them people but it's most certainly not good for our people or other ethnic or indigenous people around the world. And quite clearly that it's so systematic, it's not even healthy for the world over. With that, my friends, have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.